Here's a top 10 watches to buy as of right now. I'm gonna give you guys a little market update on what prices were and what prices are now. So first up, we're gonna start with the famous 116 500LN Panda. So the Panda at the top of the market was going for 50 to $55,000. Today, you could pick up a pre-owned or a new one anywhere in the 30 to $35,000 range. Now that's a big drop. If it's something that you were looking at when you check the prices at that time and you're finding that they're 50 to $55,000, Today, they're still expensive. It's still double retail, but it's a lot more affordable. Do you see them coming down a little more or? I mean, I think the market might have another few percent to drop a little bit, but I don't see it dropping drastically. I mean, I don't see the Panda ever being a $20,000 watch. I mean, do I see a pre-owned one maybe coming down to 26, 27,000? Yeah, but you know what? If you buy a watch, you enjoy it, you like it, you wear it, you wear it for a couple of years and you take a five, 10% haircut, it's really not that bad. In my opinion, you got your money worth. Now, number two on the list is the Rolex Pepsi. The 126710. At the height of the market, this watch was going for thirty to thirty-three thousand dollars. Today, you could pick up anywhere from pre-owned to brand new, anywhere in that seventeen five to twenty-two thousand dollar range. That's a big drop as well. In my opinion, do I see it dropping a little more? I mean, if you pick up a pre-owned one, if you're okay with buying pre-owned, I, I know some customers are like, no, I only want brand new. Yeah, if you buy a brand new one, you're gonna take a little bit of haircut instantly as soon as you walk out, right? Because there's a four or $5,000 gap between new and used. If you buy a pre-owned one, I think you're pretty safe. I mean, is there maybe a $1,000 drop, $1,500 drop? It could be, but realistically, even at an AD, if you some way somehow got lucky, which they still don't have these watches in stock, they're still going over retail, but you're gonna be spending 11, 12 grand. So you're not really paying that much over anymore. But at 30, $33,000, yeah, you're paying triple retail, but today it's not as bad as you think. Number three on the list is the famous AP Jumbo. This is gonna be the 16202 in rose gold, but the 15202 at the top of the market was in the 175 to 180 range. Some people were even asking close to $200,000 for a stainless steel Jumbo. Today, you could pick up a 15202 in the 70 to 80K range. 16202 might be closer to the $90,000 range. That's a drastic drop, right? Everybody, a lot of people know that AP did take a bigger hit than other brands. But in my opinion, do I see a further drop on that model? I don't see too drastic of a drop from the 15202 to the 16202s in price wise. I mean, even this rose gold, this is a 16202 brand new rose gold blue dial. We sold it to the customer for $125,000. Look, it's a lot of money, but for what you're getting, for the rarity of it, for the amount they produce, it's not too, too bad. I think if you're picking up an AP, even like, you know, I'm gonna tell you later on in the list of 26331s, they're already at a lower point, which I don't really see them dropping anymore. If a 15202 ST goes down another half, I mean, we have other things to worry about in the world, I think. Just to clarify this, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what the market is going to pick. It can go up, it can go down. I always tell customers, look, I've been wrong before. I do have a pretty good eye on the market, but anything can happen, right? Nobody thought paddocks were going to drop by half. AP was going to drop by half. Nobody saw the market on that. Even dealers didn't see the market on that, but anything can happen. Prices can shoot back up too. All right. Now with that being said, let's move on to the fourth one. The 116710. In my opinion, that's a good buy, right? It's a ceramic GMT, dual time zone, ceramic bezel, 40 millimeter case size, newer bracelet, shiny finish on the inside of it. And you can pick those up with no box, no papers. In the 12K range, box and papers, is gonna cost you about $14,000. It is a discontinued model, so they don't make it anymore. That's a lot of value for the money, in my opinion. I mean, even a pre-ceramic sub is gonna cost you nine to $9,500. With papers, it might even cost you more. 40 millimeter, 116710. Great buy in my opinion. It's never gonna be a seven, eight thousand dollar watch again. It's always gonna be in that 12 to 14K range. So if you want a good watch, you want something safe to buy, in my opinion, I think that's a good buy and that's a safe purchase. So moving on to five, the 26331 ST. It comes in multiple variations, right? It comes with the black with the silver subdials, it comes with the blue with the silver subdials, and also comes in the panda. Those ones you could pick them up. If it's no papers, no box, I mean, you could pick them up in the mid 40s. Box papers complete, might cost you 53 to $54,000. That watch was trading 100 to $110,000. Now, for what you're getting, in my opinion, I think it's a good buy. I mean, 45 to $55,000 for a 41 millimeter Royal Oak on a stainless steel bracelet. I think if you're wanting one of those pieces and you don't want to pay the 65, 70, 75K for a chronograph 50th anniversary or the newer reference numbers, that's a great buy for you because in reality, some people even like those dials better because they have the two-tone on the dial where the newer ones are one solid color. You're either gonna get white, black, blue, green. I personally like the 26331 ST Chrono 
better than the newer versions and you're gonna save like 20 grand. Number six on the list is the 5711 steel. Discontinued now, comes in the white, the blue dial. Those were in the, my God, I mean, I think they even got up to like 170, 180, even more depending if it was new. Today, those watches, you could pick them up close to 100, a little less than $100,000 depending on the dial. White dials, you could even pick them up in the $80,000 range. Blue dials might cost you closer to 90, 95, $100,000. Look, it's a discontinued model. They've been producing them for a while, but they didn't produce that many of them. They always change the reference numbers. Great watch, stainless steel bracelet, good size, does wear a little bit smaller than the other models. But in my opinion, for a Patek Philippe stainless steel in that range, I don't really see the watch going much less than that. I mean, it's not, I don't think it's ever gonna be a 40, 50K watch. I think it'll always stick in that 65 to 90, 95K range because Patek is never gonna go produce a ton of them and put them out. I mean, you're never gonna be able to walk in. I mean, now it's the 5811 and it's white gold, but if Paddock was still producing the 5711 of stainless steel, you're never gonna be able to walk into your local AD and pick one up. Number seven, might be a little surprise to you guys, but the Rolex Rainbow Famous Daytona. The Rolex Rainbow Daytona at one point was going for eight to $900,000, depending on the configuration you had. Some people were asking even 950 for it. Today, you could pick up a Rainbow in the 475, to 550 range, depending on the configuration of it. Now that's a watch that's very, very, very rare. The person that gets it at retail will normally keep it because if they sell it, there's such a limited supply of them that they're afraid that their dealer will obviously find out and they won't sell them another watch. So there's very few of them actually available in the market. It's only a handful at a time. So in my opinion, if you're in the market for a Rainbow Daytona, maybe this is a good time to buy it. Number eight, the 5980 rose gold. When this watch at the height of the market was close to 350 to $400,000. Today, you could pick up a nice pre-owned one anywhere in the 175 to 200K. Brand new, might run you in the 210 to 215 range. That's a drastic drop and that's a good market update right there. 5980, if you're in the market for one, we do have one in stock, come by and check it out. So number nine, the Patek Philippe 5905 rose gold. For the value of the money, for the movement that you're getting, you could pick up a nice pre-owned one, the chocolate dial. Now they have the new blue dial, which are getting a premium, obviously, because it's a newer model. But the 5905 with the brown dial, stunning timepiece, oversized dress watch, thick around the casing and everything like that. That one you could pick them up in the 58 to 65K range. For what you're getting, movement-wise, case-wise, history of the brand, it's a Patek Philippe, that's a good buy. Comparing some of the Nautiluses out there that are just chronograph movements or time only, where you're spending 100, 200, 300K, you're actually getting complications to the watch. You're getting a rose gold, you're getting a dressier piece with the leather strap, and it's an oversized watch. So the 5905 is my ninth pick. Last but not least, number 10. Richard Mill 6501 in rose gold. At the top of the market, that watch was going for seven to $800,000. Today, you could pick up a 6501 rose gold, which is probably one of the sickest watches, even movement-wise. I just had one last week that we just sold. I was playing with the watch, I mean, wow. Richard Mill knows how to build a watch. I know a lot of people say, oh, so much hype behind it. It's because they put it on this and that person. But if you actually look into the brand, you look into the movements of them and the way they build them, I mean, you will be blown away. But something like that today will run you about 335 to 360, depending on the condition, box papers, if it's new, if it's pre-owned, maybe a little bit more. But yeah, the RM6501, I had to throw a Richard Mill in there too. All right, guys, thanks for always watching. That's my market update on my 10 pieces. If there's anything you think I missed or you want to give an update, please comment it down below.